Oh, you know what you're gonna do is you gotta shake it up. <laughs> there you go. And then. Oh fuck. <laughs> I don't want to talk about how much whiskey I just got on my blazer. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another After Hours episode here. We just wrapped in the studio and we're about to dive into a little tasting here for you. Get some experimental stuff to talk about. Uh, Jay, what do you think? You uh, you excited for these things? You ready to dive in? Hell yeah. As far as I know, um, I think we're the first people to try this. This is super fun, kind of skunk work stuff. Brand new releases. All the kind of things that get us going here at Week of Whiskey. But uh, yeah, this should be fun stuff. And as far as I know, we're the first people covering it. So really cool to kind of get to unveil this to the world. Yeah, nice to get to tinker with something. Let's look at the uh, handwritten experimental labels on it. Check these things out and see what uh, see what they're doing over there at Traverse City Whiskey Company. Yeah, so we're here. We have three different single barrels. Uh, that might be a lie. I don't know that it's a single barrel. Um, we have three different well, These samples products. likely came from a single barrel. I would agree with that. Um, I don't know if the overall release is going to be single barrel, if it's going to be small batch, big batch, you know, those I are not. I think these are going to be batch. I haven't I'd seen have the to imagine. press info, though. I would have to imagine. But anyways, uh, Trevor's, you know, everyone knows these sample bottles. Super fun. Trevor City is releasing three new finished whiskeys, which is what we're here to uh, talk about today. Yeah, so the first one here we're going to go through is a port finish. No, I'm sorry. Cab Frank. Yeah, Cab Franc and a combination of Merlot. And if you uh, try to hold up, get a little color there, if you want to try to read off, I think you have the uh, mash bill stats right on the side of the bottle if you want to. Yeah, share so this that is fun. Break, this break. is 100% rye. So 100% rye. Um, it was filled way back in July of 2015. So it's about six years old since we're now in July of 2021. Um, this spent eight months aging in a Cab Franc. Uh, slash merlot barrel um and it's bottled at 50 percent abv so there should be no lack of character here hopefully lots going on both of those are very expressive bodacious wines and we all know that 100 percent rye is not pulling any punches either no there's a lot going on in that yeah what do you think i think i like the palette but then did the nose the nose i thought was a little flat not bad hmm. but it's just kind of like i mean you get that big rye character right in front i mean it's like what's up i'm rye <laughs> right nice and then food. from there you can kind of dig into it a little bit you get like the uh like a buttered black bread with a little bit of jam on it kind of thing going on i mean that wine starts to come through and it brings some uh richness some jamminess to it but that's hmm. I, I feel like it's kind of where it leaves off and that's not a bad thing it's you know there's nothing off putting to it it's just uh, a little bit simple yeah no kidding so i think for me, the nose is actually pretty inviting. The palate, not quite as much. Um, the nose, this is definitely, so this is a char four Kelvin barrel, so tons of wood influence character coming through there, but really rye on the palate, really jammy, kind of blackberry jam on the nose, which I kind of like. Yeah. So, you know, jammy up front on the nose, but it's definitely rye on the palate. It's not like a big, sweet, thin kind of mess. It's, it, it holds its character really nicely. Yeah, it goes on pretty good, half decent finish. Um, actually a fairly long finish not incredibly complex but fairly long the finish is all rice base like pumpernickel yeah. bread and blackberry jam all day yeah. I mean mm. while I would say that this is somewhat simple it's actually pretty tasty so I mean yeah man that's nice I don't think I'm mad at that it's not often in after hours you know where we've kind of wrapped up all the fun for the day that we get to go and have more fun you know we usually talk about something we review a bottle real quick but like I'm really impressed that that first one and we do have we have a port finish and a sherry finish coming up I'm really excited about port because I love port wine but uh cap front it's not it's not snoozing it's not snoozing at all no that's decent I'm excited to see where these go whoo I just picked up the port here okay so uh so this is a ruby port on that in the look so ruby's the bigger uh kind of more fruit forward instead of the tawny which are more like tobacco musty old kind of funky ports uh this is seven months so this is actually this is a bourbon so this is a 21 percent rye i'm gonna oh, okay. guess based on the 2015 that this is probably mgp stock i don't know for sure so definitely do not quote me on that but we you know we've got six years bourbon 21 percent rye mash bill and then it goes in for seven months also bottled at 100 proof so so the last time we spoke with chris 
Chris Fredrickson from Traverse City Whiskey. He had mentioned that they were using a vast majority of MGP whiskey mm-hmm. and they were blending some of their distillate into it. So it is that it's like, you know, their unique sort of spin on it. I don't know if that is what this is or if this is 100% MGP, but it's definitely well, uh, MGP on the nose. I mean, it's very distinct. It's that we'll clarification. Yeah. yeah, we'll uh, we'll get word from our folks at Travers. We'll throw them in the show notes here. But this definitely drinks like 20% rye, 21% rye from MGP for me. But I like the port. The uh, definitely Ruby port. I think that was probably the right choice. Ruby port's kind of that more fruit forward, more raspberry, strawberry, blackberry, mm. figgy kind of fruit without getting like dark and kind of brooding and tobacco-y. But what uh, what brooding? I like that. That's a good note. Tani is just like Tani just dragged it makes it so dark and savory and like well the uh, uh red breast 27 that we were both so wild about was <laughs> aged in ruby port as well yeah and that brought out that like bright fruit character yeah you know? big fruit punchiness great this actually does have it's not the same style obviously it's not going to have the same very light nuance that the red breast does but this is uh definitely got a good layer of fruit to it um yeah almost an iced tea type of thing going on with a little raspberry background oh yeah a little black tea sweet tea almost got a little bit like light conquered grape schmuckas did you just schmuckas me just a little bit of like maybe even a little pancake syrup in there too very light yeah that and that's like an indicative quality that i get from that 21 percent mash bill from MGP yeah. is it's got that that lighter kind of syrupy maple brown sugar kind of candy note to it yep. totally. which works well with the uh, with the uh, you know with the the ruby here yeah I think the ruby does bring a good amount of fruit to it it doesn't really flex as like hey I'm wine finished it doesn't really kind of stab yeah. at me like that but I think it does round this out pretty nicely and so those uh darker flavors are kind of pulling in the brightness of the fruit yeah. from that ruby pot and i think it does work it I adds like complexity without like kind of stealing the show i think is the best way of yeah put it. yeah pretty good balance overall meanwhile I'd... picking up the uh oh. sorry did you have more on sample two well not really did you because we're about on? to go over the hump on the roller coaster my friend well what i was i'm just thinking that i'm curious to see what the finish on that would have been like one month prior to this and one month after to see what the a little less fruit and what a little more fruit would really do to that because right now i think it's super balanced so i think one month in either direction might have been too much too little but this works that's fair that's fair okay let's play sherry all right to go over the hump on the roller coaster so this is also 2015 stock this is 36 percent rye so also kind of indicative that mgp mash bill not saying it's 100 percent mgp once again we will check it out we'll put yeah. the uh I would, well, I would think it probably is. I would think so too, but a lot of people get in trouble a lot of time assuming mash bills. We'll, uh, we'll check. We'll throw in the show notes, but this is a 2015 batch of 36% rye, and this is PX. This is Pedro Jimenez um, Spanish Sherry, and it's a four-month finish. And uh, do you know? Do you know much about PX, my friend, Pedro Jimenez? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know what it is, and I know that I tend to like stuff finished in PX cast. Mm-hmm. The, uh, geez, it was like the 2017 Ooh. or 18 Beam Distillers Masterpiece was uh, yeah. PX finish. All PX. PX all and day. man, did that shine. I mean, it wasn't like going to be something I would buy again. Yep. But it was cool to see that influence on an older Beam product. It was nice. PX has so much sugar that if they, in 30 years, remake Jurassic Park, I expect that they will pull a mosquito out of like a PX sherry vat. It'll be, like there'll amber. be PX amber. <laughs> It'll be like, oh, this Pedro Jimenez mosquito gives us the brontosaur. You know, um, so the four month finish here makes a lot of sense. Half as long as the others. The sherry is so sweet. It's so pancake syrupy, blueberry, blackberry, just super syrupy and rich. Um, there's no other word than syrupy. You can pour PX on things as syrup. It goes actually really good on vanilla bean ice cream. But um, diabetes aside, super sweet. I can see why they did shorter. But I have a, I have some thoughts here. I'm curious what you think first. So on this, I'm glad they used the 36% on this one. I think that makes sense. 
getting that little bit uh, extra spice in there, I think, has helped carry it a little bit. I mm -hmm. got a definitely a stronger oak character to this one, too. So I'm getting a little bit more oak spice, and it's drinking a little bit darker in profile. Definitely. I'm getting this, like, uh, sort of like a Mexican chocolate type of thing going in there. Oh, I like that. And then as it kind of moves through and you go through the palette, you get that background, that rounded sweetness to it. A little mm -hmm. bit of heaviness, but not like, not syrupy, but just a little bit heavy. Okay, that's fair. I think this one has like a light mustiness almost that I don't know if I super love. And it's mostly on the nose. I think that it might be a, like a little bit of, of this, like right. almost like sawdusty, dusty. Yeah. Bingo. And I caught a little bit of that on the second pour, the uh, the port, but it was so mild that I was ready to just glance over it. Oh. I, it is, it's like a little bit sawdusty, a little bit warehousey. Yeah, this that that for me almost kind of kills it. I love PX. I love you know Pedro Amadeth. Um That mustiness, I just can't overlook it. So I think that if I had to pick one, I would definitely be leaning towards the Cap Franc or the Port. Definitely, I think the Port is my favorite, but. I like, you know, this is kind of the fun, right? This is why we love doing what we do so much. This is why we love looking at these releases. It's fun to compare 200 milliliters of three different bottlings to see which one works. I, I think, honestly, I would I would almost throw the, the PX one back in an oak cask for like a year or maybe toasted barrel or something. Give it, I think it just needs a little more oak or, or maybe even, you know, more PX, but it, it feels a little, a little bit disjointed to me. And who knows? Maybe I'm broken. Maybe it's. Maybe it's those RTDs from earlier that like totally torched me, but I think uh, I think the port's my favorite here. Port's my favorite, yeah. I think it's the most balanced, but it's also like each component in there is elevating the other. Definitely. Whereas the the rye in the Cap Franc is tasty, but it's like really rye driven. Mm -hmm. It's got good flavors, but it comes through a little simple. It's like oh, okay, it's a pile of rye, and then there's a little bit of uh, a jamminess to the background. And I like yeah. both of those things, but between that and the port, I like the port better. I, I agree with balance you. more. Man, and though, I would the sherry kill. is. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I just I can't I can't put my finger on. It's disjointed. You're right. It there's, it it drinks like a, a little bit stronger, a little bit older, a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. But, it, yeah, it needs something. You're right. I don't know if it would be, more time with PX or. I like that they used the uh, the higher rye recipe in there, though. I think that that was a good choice. Yeah, I just think that that, that barrel or blend of barrels just needed more wood time. But I would love to yeah. see that rye in the cab front shown. I would love to see that rye in port. I think we could be looking at another high west rendezvous rye, Quadi Port, which is one of my favorite ryes of all time. I think that they, they could absolutely yeah. just make a stunner out of that. I would be interested to see that because it does sound pretty tasty. Yeah. So overall, what do you think? Port thumbs up? Yeah. Thumbs cool. up on the port. Cab Franc. I like that too. I'd thumbs up that too. Yeah. Um, a, a lesser vertical on the thumb. I mean, I think it's good though. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. Put it that way. I think that of these, the port is definitely the better. The Cab Franc is also good. Sure. Uh, but, you know, a few steps behind the port. That's fair. And... I'd like the sherry. I just think it needs some work. I think that that's probably the least developed, but this is kind of the fun of experiments. I think they're going to experiment further and we'll uh, we'll get some new new fun stuff out of them soon. Yeah, I mean, if you like a little bit of a darker expression, you know, if you're somebody who is, I think, maybe leaning towards like an Elijah Craig barrel proof style of profile, I think this might be a little bit more your your speed. Mm -hmm. Especially some of those uh, B batches. I think they tend to come through a little darker. Definitely. I th I think that that might do it for you over the spicy rye. I mean, if you're not a rye drinker, then the Cap Franc is going to be your it's cup of tea because that thing is very, very That's rye, right. which Definitely. I dig. I think it's a tasty rye. Like if you just gave me that and said, hey, I finished this thing in a cask. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet. But like, just tell me what you think of it. It's not bad rye, but it's not super influenced or balanced. I believe it. Um, I'm with you. I like it. I definitely agree on the port. Um, and, you know, it's kind of fun. I love when places do experiments like this. I hope more people will do it because 
you know, once people get to try these, I can't wait to see who likes the Sherry best, who likes the Cat Pronk best. You know, these are our tastes. Um, and we'll, we'll see how they shake out. But uh, thank you guys for joining us for another great weekly whiskey after hours. It's fun to get to kind of wrap and do some funky experimentals like this. Uh, thank you for Traverse City. They sent us these to try ahead of the public release. We had Chris Fredrickson on a while back when they actually announced it. So it's been fun to kind of watch this develop from an announcement and to actually seeing the product come to us, get to taste it. We'll get to give them our feedback and then we'll see these in bottles very shortly. I think by the fall, late this summer. But uh, if you're looking for more from John, you can find him over at the Bourbon Finder. He's doing a lot of great stuff. He's on Instagram. His website, you can find her at Finder Burber. Uh, <laughs> Finder Burber. Um, Finder Bourbon, Bourbon at Twitter. You always throw me for a loop with that one, my friend. The Finder yeah, Bourbon on Twitter. Twitter would let me have the Bourbon Finder. It's too many characters long. There's just so many R's, man. It's just hard to get their shit together, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool um if you want to find more from me um i'm jay from whiskey raiders uh whiskey raiders.com we are your rotten tomatoes and whiskey find us for reviews news and other articles covering what's new and hot in the world of whiskey but most importantly uh, we are john and jay over here at weekly whiskey so catch us on tuesday for a new live episode and again on thursdays for after hours so thanks for joining us guys super fun time um i'm gonna drink this port all night long i think that's exactly Same. what uh what i'm off to do so cheers y'all cheers <laughs>